Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our DOT workforce panel. I'd like to introduce our speakers. Myself, Marguerite Givings. I work for WISDOT as a labor development specialist. Jennifer Marks, Director of Operations with Forward Service Corporation. John Anderson, Southeast Region Director for WRTP Big Step. Uh, Noel Vandiver, uh, Tribal Labor Advisory Committee and North Central Region HCST Director. Daniel Webster, the, the Director of Diversity and Inclusion for the Wallbeck Group. I am also an United Nation Tribal Member. Adam Skenador, owner of NASA Traffic Control Services, and I'm also an Oneida member. So we'll start with an overview of the ties between the DOT, the DBE office, as well as the HCST program. So the Department of Transportation, the DOT, is dedicated to serving our community, including businesses, contracting, with state agencies and recipients of the DOT funds. And the DBE office, the department's disadvantaged business enterprise, is desi designed to remedy the ongoing discrimination and past effects, and the continuing effects of past discrimination. With the remedial goal and objective of leveling the playing field by providing sm small businesses owned and operated by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. While the HEST program, which is now known as the Highway Construction Skills Program, trains individuals to create opportunities for groups, my apologies, to create opportunity for groups historically underrepresented in the construction industry, including men and women of color, people of color. So we'll start with the rebranding of the HCST program. It was originally known as the TRANS program, which was Transportation Alliance for New Solutions. And it was rebranded in early 2023 to HCST, which is Highway Construction Skills Program. The Highway Construction Skills Program is a six week, six week long intensive training program that prepares workers for careers in the road construction industry. We have a little bit of our data from 2023 that shows our partic participation totals. There were 242 individuals trained. There were 172 graduates of the HCST program, as well as 165 individuals placed within the road construction industry in 2023. Here are some of our success story videos from individuals who have graduated from the program. The first one would start off with Amber. I'll just give a little. Get myself into it, I'm right back. Mm -hmm. oh. Just bear with us for a second, it's starting here. Sorry, maybe some service issues or connection. Okay. Yeah, Dan will so, talk a little bit about Amber in the meanwhile. So Amber Risky started with the Wallbeck Group. She is a highway construction skills training graduate. Um, I can't tell you what year, but I know that she's been with our organization for, I believe, three or four seasons now. She started as a labor apprentice with us. Um, out on a paving crew. <clears throat> she just recently transitioned over to becoming an operating engineer and is working through that apprenticeship program within Walbeck. So um, one of our female operators currently here, graduate from uh, the Janesville program. <clears throat> Couple of other people I think that are on that video. <clears throat> if you just want to click. like the first time in several years that I really had hope for the future. HCST offers an individual just the beginning 
of changes in their life. Graduates who complete this program aren't the same person they were when they complete the six weeks as when they start. Most people don't understand their own potential. Be proud of yourself. This is the beginning of the next chapter of your story. Make it a good one. It takes someone outside themselves to see what they're capable of doing, and that's what the, this program offers. The training center has given me a lot, a lot of training that's helped me when I get a call to go work somewhere other than my main summer work. It's given me confidence in doing my job. It's made me more well-rounded, not only in my career, but in my own life. All in all, you know, it's just made me a better person, a better, well-rounded, and more put-together person. She jumped at every opportunity that I gave her to make improvements um, on her marketability um, and improving those skills, and she has just run with it. When I was going through pre-apprenticeship, there were people that literally laughed in my face and told me, you're not going to make it, you're a woman, and I was like, watch And here we are, three years later, I'm not good. There's no way that I can put into words the amount of encouragement that she has given several ladies. They come back to me telling me that hearing her story really changed the way they look at their lives and what they want out of life. That is so powerful. That's even more than just a job. And it's even more than having that career. And Amber knows that. If you would have told me Hello everyone, as I mentioned, my name is Jennifer Marks, Director of Operations with Forward Service Corporation. We currently have two um, different training programs. We operate the HCST program in the Northeast region, which covers the Green Bay area as well as Winnebago County. Um, and then we have the Southwest region, which covers both Dane and Rock County. Um, this slide has the contact information for our HCST coordinators. Um, Renard, again, oversees the Northeast region, so he is housed out of our Green Bay office office, um, and then Lori, um, Southwest Region, which you saw her on the video, um, and she's in the back today. Um, she's out of our Madison office. Um, I would say email is the easiest way to contact them. They do facilitate classes regularly, um, and it is back-to-back six-week um, classes, so um, email address is usually, again, the easiest way um, to get a hold of them. We can move to the next slide. Um, so as I mentioned, we have those two training classes. We do have um, a pretty strong partnership with the technical colleges. So in the Green Bay area, our classes are facilitated at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College out of Green Bay. Um, and then our um, Southwest class is um, facilitated out of the um, Madison College as well as um, Black Hawk Technical Colleges. Um, so that's a great partnership for us because we can get assistance with the CPR, um, the um, OSHA um, training, so that's all then in person versus online. Lori facilitates our flagging training. Um, and throughout class, we invite contractors as well as past graduates to come in and speak to students um, so that they have a real um, knowledge of the industry before graduation. Um, and then our classes do operate from about November until usually June or July, just so that um, when we are graduating classes, there's opportunities in the industry for those graduates, and they're not having to wait too long before um, placement. Uh, 
All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm John Anderson. Uh, as I said before, I'm WRTP Big Steps Southeast Region Director, uh, and I oversee our uh, the HCST programming in the Southeast, which is uh, Racine, Kenosha, Walworth County. Tony White is our Chief Operations Officer, uh, and Jacob Walton is our um, Milwaukee Region Director, um, who oversees our Milwaukee office. Next slide. So uh, WRTP Big Step, uh, for those who don't know, we're a nonprofit uh, workforce intermediary. It specializes in helping individuals get into registered apprenticeships in the skilled trades through our HCST training. Um, it's a seven week long training that is ran four times per year. Uh, we also partner with our local technical college, which you've seen is Gateway Technical College, where we utilize the Gateway uh, Testing Center uh, to, to have have anyone, everyone go through and take their AccuPlacer testing uh, so they can go apply with a particular tradecraft uh, union of their choice. During their seven weeks, um, they go through various hands-on activities. They have a gateway instructor who takes them through building methods and construction materials handling, blueprint reading. Um, they do OSHA 10, OSHA 30 sometimes, depending on how we craft the schedule. CDL prep so that they can get their CDL uh, permit uh, hopefully the employers will take them further and help them get their actual licenses, but they come out of the training with their CDL permit in hand, uh, as well as they also have their flag flaggers training certificate uh, and first aid CPR. And additionally, we use what is called the multi-core craft curriculum, which is a curriculum that was approved by the National Building Trades Council. So in addition to uh, such as the skills that an employer would be looking for around blueprint, around trade craft, but also they learn about the uh, history of the uh, heritage of the American worker, uh, history of apprenticeship, what is the registered apprenticeship system, how did it start, what does it mean to be in a trade union, what are trade unions, and so we want them to come out and be fully formed and rounded to understand the industry uh, from all aspects when they complete their training. Uh, our training is accredited um, nationally. It's accredited by the Department of um, Workforce Development and the Bureau of Apprenticeship Standards. So we are known as a certified pre-apprenticeship provider as addition to all of our graduates, as you know, who complete the HCST program, uh, become a part of the DOT's labor pool, which means they're eligible for the $5 an hour wage reimbursement as an incentive for hire. And if they're on Milwaukee projects, the incentive for apprentices. You can go to the next. Is that it? Sweet. Uh, hello, or good afternoon. I'm Noel Vandiver, the uh, Tribal Labor Advisory Committee and North Central Region Highway Construction Skills Training Program Director. Um, and yeah, it, exactly what Jennifer and um, John had said, you know, I focus on the, the North Central Region of Wisconsin and we provide a hybrid option for the six week training. Um, we do majority of our training and our classes online. We have about four, sometimes five in-person classes throughout the six weeks. Um, we don't stay in just one area. We're up in the north central part of Wisconsin. It's really rural communities. So we kind of travel around that whole north central region and host the classes in different areas. So um, being able to develop that hybrid option and have things be done online, at least majority of things, um, and limit that travel for participants, you know, it makes it a little easier on their pocket um, being able to get to classes and in-person things all the time. Um, but yeah, we provide the OSHA 10, flagger certification, uh, first aid, CPR, um, the CDL prep. Um, right now we have, or we'll be starting a class with, in Menominee, or in Kashina, Wisconsin with Menominee Tribe um, on Monday, March 4th. And then coming up in May and June, we'll be looking at doing a joint class with the North Central Region and the Northwest region up in Bad River, um, Odana, Odana, Wisconsin, um, and trying to get some participation uh, from that area. Other than that, with the TLAG program, we have, we focus on CDL training and heavy equipment training for tribal members of the 11 federally recognized tribes in the state. Um, currently, we have eight uh, tribal members 
attending three different technical colleges throughout the states, so like Fox Valley Technical College, Chippewa Valley Technical College, and North Central Technical College. Um, we had have eight individuals attending those three schools, um, earning their CDL right now today. We also have another provider, which is in the Lacoudere, at the Lacoudere Community College. And at this time, they are making some changeovers to their representation. So we have listed is Celeste Patterson, Peterson, my apologies, as our contact, as well as Tamara Thim. And there's some contact information. As Noel mentioned, we are working on doing a combined class with, between the North Central, with the North Central region to try to get the classes going as far as HCST again. Yeah, again, my name is Daniel Webster. I'm the Director of Diversity and Inclusion within the Wallback Group. Um, I think we can flip to the next slide here. <clears throat> this is our Diversity and Inclusion Statement as an organization. Um, I think the really unique thing about the Wallback Group is that we do heavy highway construction work throughout kind of the Midwest area, and so we have a unique ability to really partner with some of our HCST providers. So John Anderson, who is in the Racine area, we spend a lot of time with him through our business part partners participation, who is also here in the audience. Um, you see a lot of, this thing looks pretty wall back heavy, but that isn't by coincidence. It's by strategic effort that we've really stayed involved with these programs throughout the state, whether it's in the Racine, Milwaukee metro area versus some of the, some of the more rural communities where there are a lot of tribal members um, we have really good relationships with tribes throughout the state as well. We've been able to increase um, representation pretty dramatically. And one of our business units in Northeast Wisconsin called Northeast Asphalt, at one point in time, 5% of our workforce there were tribal members, um, which is really significant. Um, I myself graduated from the Highway Construction Skills Training Program in 2014. Um, didn't have any construction experience. One of the first jobs that I was on was flagging. Um, I flagged on a project in Ontario, Wisconsin. There's probably not a lot of people who know where that's at. I didn't know where it was at either. Um, but traveled there, really started to learn about heavy highway construction through that process. And then I um, transitioned over and worked as a traffic control technician throughout the state, working on infrastructure work. One of the bigger projects that I was on was the I-41 corridor project back in um, you know, tw 2014, 15, those, those years. I was also on the Zoo Interchange project up and down 94, um, setting up traffic control in that area as well. 94, 90, 39, I've been all over the state doing work. So I oftentimes tell people, you know, I started in the same place that a lot of these trans graduates started, right? With no experience, um, looking for an opportunity to get involved. One of the things that we oftentimes talk about when it comes to highway construction skills training is the value proposition. Um, I went to school as well, you know, graduated from uh, NWTC with a technical degree, an associate's degree. It was still difficult for me to find work with that degree. And then I go through a six week program and all of a sudden I'm on a job making $30 an hour um, after investing five weeks versus the two weeks where I had, or the two years where I had paid into education. And so um, the value proposition in terms of getting involved in the industry is, is really high, right? So. Um, there's a lot of opportunity that exists. There isn't a ceiling that, that you'll bump up against earlier on, and you can really you know, get out what you put into this thing, is what we tell folks. In, in my outreach efforts, a lot of times when I'm talking to, whether it's um, in the tribal community or, or John's classes down in Racine, right, um, is that we don't want everybody. We want people that have a good attitude, have a willingness to learn, and that are gonna be reliable. Everything else we're gonna train you, you'll learn on the job. Um, you'll hear from a, D, a DBE contractor here who is in the mentor protege program with the Wallbeck Group shortly. But really, you know, as an organization, we're always trying to figure out how to create the most alignment to make sure that we're increasing opportunities for women and people of color, but also making sure that we're, we're adding to, to building business capacity with folks like Adam. The other thing, thing that, that we do that's pretty unique is, is we do focus on cultural competency in our organization. So it's one thing to hire right, folks from these programs. The other thing, it, it's a whole other thing to retain them 
and make sure that you're making the investments so that they're successful long term. We've been really successful at hiring HCST graduates, but one of our focuses right now is to make sure that we're wrapping support around those individuals so they're not just in entry level positions, right, throughout their entire career. We want to make sure that they're there's opportunity for them to advance and contribute at higher levels um, throughout at least our organization. So my name is Adam. Um, one of the, th the things I'm here for is that I use, or I'm gonna start using some of the services. I use the HCST uh, with Renard and got amazing help. You know, the program that they're running is awesome. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. A little nervous here. I'm not used to doing these things. Um, so, in, in with that, like it's it's just getting the labor force out there for a lot of companies. A lot of companies are dealing with right now is almost <laughs> for me. It seems like it's non-existent. We have these good quality union-paying jobs, and I'm having the hardest time filling them. Um, so it's it's nice to get with you know these groups and and figure out how to fill those positions especially in the, you know, with the individuals of color and, 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 and in my region or the tribal, you know, area. Um, you know, we have a ton of work, you know. What I would say is keep pushing through. I started, you know, in 2009 as a flagger. And by 2018, I became the general manager. 2021, I had an opportunity to start my own business, you know. So it's there. It's there for everybody. So just keep pushing, you know, and... and get in these programs, get that skill set, and, you know, keep, keep working every day, and, and things, things can change, you know. Oh, <laughs> so what we do is, uh, as a company, so we provide traffic control, you know, we do everything from flagging, traffic control, like lane closures, uh, detours, um, we work primarily was in the utility sector for a lot of, you know, electric and gas companies, uh, last year, we started to break off and do WIST.work. work. We're uh, in the mentor protege program with Payne and Dolan, and they've been a huge help in in uh, guiding me through uh, that process alone. Just doing work for uh, WIST. Um, so we offer, like I said, yeah, it's you know traffic control. We do traffic control plans. We basically from the start to finish. Um, kind of you know when building this this company i wanted to do something different because not only were we minority you know so we have to we have to strive harder for all the the to make our name basically so we have to do everything safe we have to you know you know concentrate on you know being being uh the workmanship is there you know there's there's so many hurdles in front of us and it, if we can just take care of all those things you know we'll do really well um yeah i think that's uh you know as you can see, just in the last two and a half years, we, we actually have about, that doesn't show them all, but we were able to work for 75 different companies. Um, and that's, that, oh, thank you. And that is through the building of my employees. That's it's not me. I can, I can get the work, but the employees do the work. So it's building a relationship, a family type um, environment that everyone loves to you know, come to work and, and uh, be a part of. We'd like to open it up for any questions that you all may have in regards to the HCSC training program or our providers, the services they provide, or networking with our contractors. Anyone have any questions? No? Come on, we live off questions, no? <laughs> okay. I'll bring it to you. Celeste Peterson with the question. I was just going to say, how did you um, were able to come over any adversity with, you know, starting with your company and starting as a flagger? Yeah. So here's the, the biggest thing I can say with getting over that. Um, I just worked hard and I had a willingness to learn, listen. Um, Starting off in the business, I had zero idea what traffic control was. You know, I just got offered a job, and it said it was you work nights, sometimes you work days. Um, I, I was kind of like in between like construction and, and all this other stuff, and I, I jumped in it. And 
you know, I'd, one of my first nights, I had to take a lane, lane closure on 94 headed towards Chicago. And, and if everyone knows that's like 90 miles an hour, and it was that night, and my foreman says to me, hey, start pushing those barrels out so we can push traffic over. And I'm like, what in the hell? I'm not doing that. But then just the rush of that, like, I was hooked, you know. And then every time there was something that came up, I asked if I could do it. If there was night shift, I asked if I could do it. If there was something that my foreman needed, I tried to be a part of that and, and just learn. Um, <clears throat> I always had a problem with, with people telling me what to do. So I tell everybody there's two things you can do with that. You can, you can fight against it and not go anywhere because you don't like that. Or you can put in the work, learn what that person is telling, you know, or what that person does you know, that you can, you can become that person or then just keep striving. So that's what I did. I mean, I, I worked as a, a traffic control tech flagger and then, you know, the next promotion was a foreman and then supervisor. You just got to do the work. You know, you, you can't get these, these positions just by them falling on your lap. You have to work. You have to make the change yourself. Um, and yeah, I, I got to a certain point and, you know, there was, uh, a glass ceiling for me, you know, because I hit, hit this point where I wasn't going to become a, a VP or a senior VP just because I didn't have the education or the knowledge of the, the company that I was with in their particular stuff that, like their gas and electric installation that they had. So with that, it was the, the next step was, you know, reaching out, building a, a traffic, you know, a business plan. I keep saying traffic plan, a business plan um, in, in my experiences of what I had. So I spent months doing that. It wasn't something I just threw together. Um, it, it was really diving into it, like what you know, and putting that on paper, and then bringing that out there. Um, there was so then when it, once I got to that point, I brought that business plan plan to uh, banks, some of the more commercial banks, and I was turned down. Um, I didn't have the the down payment skin in the game to ask for those size of loans that we were asking for. And that's when I was pushed, put in touch with the CDFs, the tribal CDFs, and, and which was a, a, a great thing. And, and, I, and I, now I try to boast about that wherever I can, get that information out there, that there's, regardless where you're from, there is help out there. We just have to find it and, and put it all together. So there are ways to overcome. Good work ethic overcomes a lot, you know, but, but having these networking events and getting to know people you know, that can also aid in, in getting over those hurdles, too. I have a question for um, some of the panelists. So we are lucky enough to get to invite, you know, HCST students and graduates to these events. After this panel discussion, there's a, you know, HCST networking event. So we talk a lot during our training about soft skills and the importance of kind of presenting yourself during interviews. And you know, we in the audience have some HCST students. Um, I think it's really important to remember it's not always what you say, it's also the actions in these types of events. And contractors are constantly watching um, and observing. So maybe a, a question for the other panelists, what are you looking for when you're doing those interviews or even outside of the interviews? Um, what do our HCST students and graduates kind of need to be mindful for at these types of events? Well, I'll go first since I'll just you know, pass the mic this way. Um, I think that uh, what individuals need to be mindful of. Uh, first and foremost, we're all humans. We're all striving for the same thing. We all want to be successful, take care of our families. And so having a certain level of confidence and pride in yourself, um, knowing that if you went through a six or a seven week um, commitment, uh, predominantly usually is non-paid, that shows that you have the ability to start something and finish something. And, and that should inspire confidence in you. Um, but also understand Understanding that uh, it's a, it's it's a business, um, you know. Somewhat of our relationships are transactional, as you know. Daniel Webster stated, they want someone who's reliable, who's going to be on time, who's going to put in. Uh, Adam said, put in the work. Um, so, I would always say just to imply more about what it is you bring as an individual, your work ethic 
your, your, your quality, you as a person. You've already demonstrated through your certifications and your resume and all these things that you have the skills that you've prepared, but to make that connection to that contractor to say, why am I the right person to work for your company? It's about you and where you're aspiring and where you want to go in your career. So I would say be confident and really try to express that you're doing this because it's a career choice, not just you know a, a fad or a fashion, a fly by night. You've taken the time to invest in yourself and you know where you want to go and you want them to be a part of that to help you take it to the next level. Yeah, just to echo a little bit what John was saying, um, I, I got a few students here from the North Central Region uh, HCST program. One thing we talk about in the first day of class is, you know, this industry, it is hard work. It's, it takes dedication, it takes sacrifice, it takes commitment. Um, but it, if you're willing to learn, it, it's, you, you can make things happen for you real easily in this industry. Um, you just got to have that willingness and that, um, that desire to keep moving forward um, and pursue, you know, other opportunities, better opportunities. Uh, there, there's so many different directions you can go in this industry, so many different opportunities. Um, this program opens up all kinds of doors for graduates uh, once they complete the program. Yeah, I'll, I'll just echo a, a little bit of what Jennifer had touched on here as far as presentation really being important along with those soft skills, um, but really being able to, to position yourself in a way in which you understand what you want to do is important as well. Um, when you're interfacing with an HR professional, an HR business partner um, within our industry, right, it's, it's hard for us to tell you what you should do. And I think it's important for you to understand and do a little bit of research in regards to, you know, where you want to start at, right? And a lot of times people will come and, and they won't know that information and, and that's okay too, we can help you. But throughout sitting through a six week program, whether it's with HR, uh, WRTP Big Step or HCST, you should, have, you should have done a little bit of footwork to kind of to put yourself in a situation to understand some of those things, especially the contractors that you're talking to. Um, but on top of the things that were already reiterated here, you know, just having that willingness to learn um, and again, knowing who you're talking to when you, when you do have that opportunity is going to be huge for you to secure employment. So I think for the people in here that are going to network right after this, it is being confident, engage, you know, in the conversation that you're going to have with these potential employers. Um, that, cause that's really all they're going to see right from the start. And that's the first impression. You know, if you're looking to work for that company, introduce yourself, try to find confidence, be engaged in that, converse, that conversation, um, and ask a lot of questions. You know, that's when you're networking here, that's from a business standpoint, that's, that's what we're looking for. Because we're not really going to be able to see your, your work ethic. We can, we can see your, your resumes, um, but have a good conversation with them. You know, have them, hopefully they'll ask questions about you and, and you can ask questions about them and, and you'll, you'll build that foundation right there. Yes, um, thank you, panel. I'm enjoying hearing about each of your journeys, but um, Adam, I have a specific question for you. Um, our HCST program, um, it kind of has dual um, you know, outcomes for us. We certainly want to make sure that we train people um, to be available in the construction industry, because in order to you know, get the labor compliance, you know, we got to we got to have um, those people. But um, another result is that we would hope that as our diverse um, um, HCST graduates are in the industry, just as yourself, that they <clears throat> recognize and realize that, you know what, I could have my own business too. And then that they later become DBEs like you did. And so my question to you is, um, when you were um, working and deciding that you wanted 
to um, you know begin your own business. Um, I I just would like to know. I know you said you hey I don't want people telling me what to do, and that's you know probably a a small factor of it, right? But um, I'm I'm sure as you were um, developing your business, you probably consulted with people. There's things you did. There's mistakes you made. Things that you know just just panned out for you. Could you just really um, describe that experience for us? Yes. Yeah, so there. <laughs> When I, when I said that, I didn't mean that I was just disgruntled, didn't want anyone. Um, but it was, it was really an idea, like if, if you want to get to the top, you really have to work hard at it and learn, you know, what's above you, you know, and push to do that. Um, some of the other, yeah, I guess I was trying to figure out like the bulk of your question. What was, <laughs> God, challenges. There, there's a, in, in just starting it, um, right out the gate for me, it was a financial challenge. Um, although I had a really good job, you know, startup for me, the startup cost for a traffic control business, you know, or initially was in going into traffic control and restoration and the startup costs were, let's just say it was a, a million and a half. You know, even though I had this, this great business plan, you know, the commercial banks, you know, they weren't they weren't going to give me that without substantial skin in the game or down payment. Um, so I really had to scale back then, um, and that, that's where working with meeting with well, I had an SBA advisor. I met with uh, Gary and Bill Beeson from the FACC. We worked together. We scaled back that business plan um, to just traffic control, and found a number that that they were comfortable than loaning and that, that I could get off the ground. Um, so it's, you, you know, the, there's finances and then, so that, that's an issue. And then just knowing like the, the business, you know, I, I was a GM, but I wasn't a business owner. There's so much that goes into it. Um, you really have to do the time, the paperwork, all this stuff, know what you're selling or what you're working with. Um, you know, pricing, getting, you know, daily price lists out there and stuff like that. Um, it's, and it's just, like I said, work, work with, take all the advice you can get basically um, and, and put, you know, meet with people, network with people, um, surround yourself, you know, with people that believe in you and that can offer advice, whether you take it or not, you know, it, it, you know, everyone has ideas and, and it's all, it's good to take it all in.